2022 meeting dates was published in the East and Express Times and the Hunter and Democrat on February 17, 2022, and posted on the bulletin board at Borough Hall. Action may now be taken. Please join me for the next meeting. with the reading of the March 31st, 2022 regular minutes. Move. Second. Roll call. Graham. Yes. Hughes. Schwartz. Yes. Silvestri. Yes. Strange. Yes. And Fair. Yes. Motion to approve the March 31st, 2022 regular minutes. Move. Second. Roll call. Graham. Yes. Hughes. Schwartz. Yes. yes. Silvestri. Yes. Strange. Yes. And Fair. Yes. Okay, we have two pro proclamations tonight. Uh, proclamation in support for Arbor Day. Arbor Day, I can't talk. Whereas in 1872, J. Sterling Norton proposed to the Nebraska Board of Agriculture that a special day be set forth for planting trees. And whereas this holiday called Arbor Day was first observed with the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska. And whereas Arbor Day is now observed through the nation and the world and whereas trees can reduce the erosion of our precious topsoil by wind and water, cutting heat and cooling costs, moderate the temperature, clean the air, produce life-giving oxygen, and provide habitat for wildlife, and whereas trees are a renewable source, giving us paper, wood for our homes, fuel for our fires, and countless other wood products, and whereas trees in our city increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of business areas, and beautify, beautify our community, now, therefore, be it proclaimed by the Borough Council of the Borough of Highbridge that we do hereby proclaim Friday, April 29th, 2022, 2022, as Arbor Day in the Borough of Highbridge, and we urge all citizens to celebrate Arbor Day by planting a tree to support efforts to protect our borough trees. More reading out loud. Proclamation in support of Earth Day. Whereas in 1970, you, oops, Sorry, U.S. Senator Gaylord Nelson created Earth Day, whereas it was first held in the United States on April 22nd, the birthday of J. Sterling Morton, the founder of Arbor Day, whereas the first Earth Day led to the creation of the United States Environmental Protection Agency and the passage of the Clean Air, Clean Water, and Endangered Species Act, whereas Earth Day is now observed throughout the nation and the world, and whereas Earth Day is intended to inspire awareness of and appreciation for the Earth's environment, and now therefore be it pro proclaimed that by the Borough Council of the Borough of Highbridge that we do hereby proclaim Friday, April 22nd, 2022 as Earth Day in the Borough of Highbridge, and we urge all citizens to celebrate Earth Day and to support efforts to protect our environment. Okay, on uh, to public comments, three minutes per person. It is the policy of the Borough Council that all public comments on an issue shall be limited to three minutes per person. Comments may be made on any subject pertaining to borough issues. Comments pertaining to public hearings should be saved to that section of the agenda. Each person may speak once during a public comment section. No debating between residents. Comments should be addressed to Mayor and Council of the Public Microphone. Hey everybody, Sally Ward from Solitude. At our last meeting, I strongly objected to Councilperson Schwartz's challenge to the salary and wage resolution and his lack of trust in a Burr administrator's report on that. I want to clarify my position. Since 2019, when our Mayor Michelle Lee began serving on Borough after defeating past Republican Mayor Mark Desire, she successfully encouraged all our public and our borough employers to work together and to work hard to improve Highbridge for all our residents and visitors alike. With that encouragement and I dare say vision, Highbridge has witnessed its third flat annual budget of the municipal level. Thanks for that, Mayor Lee, and CFO Lee. Um, thank you. 
Uh, with that same encouragement towards our Board of Education, it appears that that part of the residents' property taxes will see its lowest per home monthly increase since the 2017-18 audit. Thanks again, Mayor Lee. When at the last meeting I heard resident Garcia uh, thank Councilperson Schwartz for delaying wage and salary increases for our borough employees, she called it a good service for our taxpayers. And her sentiments were echoed by a couple of other residents. I ask of you, how is withholding increases in wages for dedicated borough employees any kind of good service to taxpayers? To me, the only result of delaying these uh, is wages increases is the lowering of morale among those who work so hard for each of us each and every day, and for some, both day and night, as is the case with our police force and our Department of Public Works people. These are the good folks who keep our faucets running, our toilets flushing, and our roads safe for us all during these snowy nights so you and I can climb out of our warm beds to drive safely to work. And I ask, how does challenging the credibility of our employees' increases translate into a good service for our residents? It doesn't. So for goodness sake, to those few of you who have been coming to council meetings and repeatedly insinuating one way or another the need for transparency, which already exists, please stop it. You are not helping build community. Mayor Lee is the ultimate example of transparency. Before she began her service to us in this capacity, all council meetings were held in person, often with very little attendance. It is our Mayor Michelle Lee who brought videotaping of all our council meetings to all the people to view clearly and freely in the comfort of their own homes at their convenience. Don't think for even one second that the majority of our residents are fooled by repetitive rhetoric insinuating any lack of transparency by our mayor. We should know her as Mayor Michelle Transparency Lee. Thank you, Mayor, for your uh, kind and continued honest service. Oh, and a uh, lighter note, Hummingbirds are on the way back to New Jersey, so put your feet up. Thanks. Okay. Any other public comments? Okay. Uh, first up, uh, discussion item. We have uh, Natalie Ferry, Historical Committee Liaison with her goals. Great, 2022. We have a slide presentation. Um, as, I'm, as I'm speaking, you can watch along with the slide presentation. So, um, Adam, next slide, please. So all, are, all of you are familiar, I'm sure, here in the room and hopefully those watching on the video. Um, Historic Solitude House. Uh, we will be having a uh, brunch with the mayor later this month that we'll be advertising. And I encourage all residents to come by and see what we've been doing um, at the Solitude House. Next slide, please. So our first goal this year, it's a goal that we've been working on for a couple years now, is the historic re registry application. So we plan to continue to aid in the research and preparation of the national and state historic registry application and the submission is planned for July of 2022. A New Jersey Historic Trust Grant was awarded in 2022 to provide funding for professional services by Dennis Bertland Associates to complete the application for state and national registry of historic places and to develop a strategic plan with a new mission and vision statement for Solitude House. The committee historian has conducted extensive research for Dennis Garbell and Associates to provide supporting documentation and com committee stakeholder meetings have been held to review and interpret stakeholder interviews that had been conducted in the fall of 2021. So various people throughout the community have been interviewed for their input on what they thought the vision of um, Solitude House should be. And the committee also, along with the strategic plan, I'm oh, sorry, along with the stakeholder interviews, was working on the strategic plan as well for several several meetings to be able to prepare a, a to be able to prepare and sustain um, a plan for the future. So that way, Solitude House could generate its own income and provide um, monies for restoration and ongoing maintenance. Next slide, please. So solitude house repairs. Um, the 2022 Hutterdon County um, Historic Preservation Grant application for the rebuilding of the two-story two North Porch has been submitted, prepared and submitted just this week, as well as the 2022 New Jersey Historic Trust grant application has also been submitted to cover architectural documents for the North Porch. 
Building for the west porch will begin in the spring and work is estimated to start in early summer. So that is the grant that we received last summer, which will fix that porch that's being held up with wood at this time. Unfortunately, we didn't have a, a heavy winter with snow, so we were worried about that coming down, but that's a very exciting um, milestone for us. Uh, the committee's also working to finish the second floor remodel at Solitude House and continue uh, pre preparation for use of the garage and the annex building. Also, uh, a goal that we've been wanting to complete for many years now is the, to complete the driveway stonewall repair and the repair of the driveway and the parking area. Most of you who walk by there know that it's, it's in uh, incredible need of repair. So that's a huge goal and we'll certainly be celebrating once we get that done. So, and also just for um, some of you who might not understand the process, I myself am still, still on a learning curve of how all of this works with the grant applications. But when we're awarded a grant, um, that money is still for the West Side Porch it's still with the county. It's not handed over to us. It's very specific. It's for that west side porch. There's strict criteria. So it's not like we get handed the money and we can do whatever we want with it. So it's under strict guidelines. Next slide, please. So fundraising. Um, as we've rehabilitated the house and the first floor, we created this little store called Taylor Trade. And within the store, you can see in the pictures, um, various committee members have developed different types of merchandise for fundraising. And it's been really successful, and it's, um, it's fun to come to Solitude House and buy something and have a little souvenir. We had a, um, a school class trip from, um, and I apologize to the school for not remembering the, uh, the school name, but it was a private school out in, um, I believe in Caldwell. And they came by and they were super excited with learning about the history of solitude, about the history of the uh, Taylor Iron Steel Company and Highbridge. And also get to stop into the little shop and buy a few things. And also um, thank you to the volunteers who have supported um, selling the merchandise, creating merchandise, helping us with marketing, and um, just getting the word out that we're doing something in, at Solitude House. So. Um, also, keep an eye out for our Tisco um, market, which will start this uh, next month, and that's every fourth um, Saturday of the month, and that will be in the area which will soon be developed into the grounds uh, for art, which is another exciting project that another group is working on. So, next slide, please. Oh, and I forgot one more thing in there. In our merchandise, we developed these awesome little booklets which goes through the renovation of what we've done at Solitude House and this little booklet's dedicated to a committee member who unfortunately we lost passed away in December Joseph Brennan and we're selling those for $10 each and it all goes back into helping the renovations at the house so sorry I had to pedal my yeah pedal my wares a while they're I nice get, books while they're I very get, nice books. it came out wonderfully yeah. and um, I, great oh uh, Greg Lindgren and also um, who, the gentleman who used to uh, video our meetings, took a lot of pictures and videos, and also um, Brandon Tedesco, a new um, resident of Highbridge, also contributed some photographs in there as well. So it's all volunteers helping us, uh, great big effort for, for Highbridge and for Solitude. So, uh, so Springside cleanup. So this is something that various um, passionate volunteers have tried to get started in the past. We had put up the, a tarp twice. Unfortunately, that has blown off, but that's not going to stop us. We're going to continue with the cleanup at Springside Farms and also work with the NJDEP and develop a plan that meets the Green Acres requirements. And we also learned that currently we're prohibited, we're prohibited in ground disturbance. So the community garden, which was a really awesome idea, which I would love Highbridge to have a community garden. Um, but unfortunately right now, because of the strict gui um, guidelines with what we can do on the property, we can't do that. Um, but we will be figuring out something that we could do with that property and eventually getting that restored and hopefully some grants there as well. Next slide, please. 
and volunteer recruitment. We're going to focus on getting more volunteers in, and, um, and that's really the heartbeat of how all of this can happen. It's not something one person can do, but it's, it's really a community effort, and there's something for everyone. So whether you're into um, gardening or painting, we have volunteers who are passionate about trim painting. We have plenty of trim painting, so that's awesome. So there's a lot that we can do um, to get this going together. Um, so just reach out to uh, history at highbridge.org and you know let us know what your um, you know your talent is, what your passion is, and if you'd like to uh, join us. You don't necessarily have to be a history geek, but there's it's an awesome way to be a part of part of what we're doing. Um, so the next slide, please. So I will end with um, if you are interested in having an event, a private family event, um, contact us at history at highbridge.org. As you can see in the pictures, um, the building has really changed inside. It's really quite amazing what's been done in there with the effort of many people. And um, also keep in mind, uh, all of the committees in Highbridge are welcome to use the space for free. If because they branch off of the, the government of Highbridge. So like whether you're the creative team or the economic development committee, whoever, uh, you can use that meeting space as long as it's available. And anyone else who might be interested, give us, give us a shout, send us an email. Uh, everything that goes back into that house helps restore it. So it's an awesome way to celebrate life's milestones and, and also do something great for the community. So those are our goals. That's what we plan to keep on moving forward, and hopefully we'll report back to you that we get another grant this coming summer. So nice. thank you for listening. And stop by after the meeting to check out the booklet. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Natalie. Yeah, great job. Okay, on to public hearings. We have <clears throat> Ordinance 2022-011, Purchase of DPW Vehicle F-350. Motion to open the public hearing. Move. Second. Roll call. Graham? Yes. Hughes? Schwartz? Yes. Sylvester? Yes. Strange? Yes. And Fair? Yes. Mr. Sylvester, do you have an update on this or you want to just give everyone a background? Yeah, so I wasn't prepared for that, but I, Rick and I had spoken about this vehicle that we're replacing. That's fine. Um, I believe it's 2006. Uh, pickup truck that is just out of service it's breaking down all the time they're putting more money than it's worth into this vehicle and you know if you want to maintain a dpw you have to maintain equipment and update your fleet and uh, this is part of that that process so uh, you know, after rick and i spoke about this i'm personally very comfortable with up updating this equipment and, and moving forward thanks sorry. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> uh any comments from council mm -hmm. Public uh, comments, anybody? Great idea, keep the uh, snow off the roads. Thank you guys. <laughs> okay, motion to close the public hearing for ordinance 2022-011. Move. Second. Motion to adopt ordinance 2022 roll call. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Roll call. Graham? Yes. Hughes? Schwartz? Yes. Sylvester? Yes. Strange? Yes. And fair? Yes. Okay. Motion to adopt ordinance 2022-011. Move. Roll call. Graham? Yes. Hughes? Schwartz? Yes. Sylvester? Yes. Strange? Yes. And fair? Yes. Okay. Now we have a long list of introductions. Ordinance 2022-012, Capital Improvements, the Firehouse. Motion to introduce. Uh, move. Second. Roll call. Graham? Yes. Hughes? Schwartz? Yes. Sylvester? Yes. Strange? Yes. And Fair? Yes. Ordinance 2022-012 shall be published in the Express Times and or the Hunterdon County Democrat along with the public hearing date of April 28, 2022. Ordinance 2022-013, Capital Improvements, Preliminary Engineering. Motion to introduce. Move. Second. Roll call. Graham? Yes. Hughes? Schwartz? 
Yes. Sylvester? Yes. Strange? Yes. And fair? Yes. Ordinance 2022-013 shall be published in the Express Times and or the Hunter and County Democrat along with the public hearing date of April 28, 2022. Ordinance 2022-014, multi-use trailer. Motion to introduce. Move. Second. Roll call. Brand. Yes. Hughes. Schwartz. Yes. Sylvester. Yes. Strange. Yes. And Fit. Yes. Ordinance 2022-014 shall be published in the Express Times and or the Hunter and County Democrat along with the public hearing date of April 28, 2022. Ordinance 2022-015, purchase of water meters. Motion to introduce. Move. Second. Roll call. Graham. Yes. Hughes. Schwartz. Yes. Sylvester. Yes. Strange. Yes. And Ferry. Yes. Ordinance 2022-015 shall be published in the Express Times and or the Hunterdon County Democrat along with the public hearing date of April 28, 2022. <coughs> Ordinance 2022-016, Solid Waste Natural Recycling Center. Motion to introduce. Move. Second. Roll call. Graham? Yes. Hughes? Schwartz? Yes. Sylvester? Yes. Strange? Yes. And Fair? Yes. Ordinance 2022-016 shall be published in the Express Times and or the Hunterdon County Democrat along with the public hearing date of April 28, 2022. Ordinance 2022-017, water main improvements, various streets, motion to introduce. Move. Second. Roll call. Graham? Yes. Hughes? Schwartz? Yes. Sylvester? Yes. Strange? Yes. And Ferry? Yes. Ordinance 2022-017 shall be published in the Express Times and or the Hunterdon County Democrat along with the public hearing date of May 12, 2022. Ordinance 2022-018, Water Main Improvements, West Main Street. Motion to introduce. Move. Second. Roll call. Graham? Yes. Hughes? Schwartz? Yes. Sylvester? Yes. Strange? Yes. And Fair? Yes. Ordinance 2022-018 shall be published in the Express Times and or the Hunterdon County Democrat along with the public hearing date of May 12, 2022. Ordinance 2022-019, amend chapter 145, farmers markets. Motion to introduce. Move. Second. Roll call. Grimm. Yes. Hughes. Schwartz. Yes. Sylvester. Yes. Strange. Yes. And Fair. Yes. Okay, on to the consent agenda. Does anyone like to pull anything out? Motion to approve consent agenda resolution 107 through resolution 116. Move. Move. Second. Roll call. Graham? Yes. Hughes? Schwartz? Yes. Sylvester? Yes. Strange? Yes. And Ferry? Yes. Okay, on to old business. Resolution 104 2022 salary and wages. Mayor, I'm going to suggest that maybe we amend the agenda on this. Okay. Uh, because um, many of the items that are uh, uh, in this resolution are going to be discussed in executive session, and there also may be discussion about other issues before executive session, um, because uh, pursuant to the rights, there are certain uh, employees asked to have the discussion about them in open session. So I'm going to suggest that maybe we put this re move this resolution um, to after resolution 119 200 2022. Uh, I can you just repeat that? I'm sorry. Yeah, to after resolution 119 okay. 2022. Okay. So that would, that would be, be my recommendation. That would be after coming out after of the executive, executive session. session. Yes. Because then the council will know what they want to vote on, how they want to vote on different on this, and, and so that'll be part of the choices the council will have in terms of voting on this. Okay. So can I get a motion to? Amend the agenda to move resolution 104 to after executive session. Is that correct? After resolution 119. Oh, in executive Yeah, got it. It will be after executive session because you're not allowed to vote on these in executive right. session. Right. 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 
Okay, I second his move. Right. I'm sorry, who had the motion? Okay. Sure. Eric, okay. Uh, roll call. Graham? Yes. Hughes? Schwartz? Yes. Sylvester? Yes. Strange? Yes. And Fair? Yes. Okay, public comments. One minute per person. Legal issues, Barry. No, there have been no legal issues. <laughs> what about your knees? <laughs> no, is that a legal issue? <laughs> yeah, really. No medical malpractice case, thankfully. Yeah. Um, just, no, nothing to report on tonight. Okay, great. Uh, communications. Uh, we have the March zoning report and the notice of hearing for Elizabeth Town Gas as changes in gas service. Bill list. Uh, 381916 dollars and ninety nine cents. Okay, motion to approve the bill list. Move. Second. Roll call. Graham? Yeah. Hughes? Schwartz? Yes. Silvestri? Yes. Strange? Yes. And Fair? Yes. Okay, uh, motion to move. You in. know, maybe before you do that, um, because there were, let me just count them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different employees who received the rice notice <clears throat> who said that they would rather have any job performance salary evaluation for them individually um, discussed in open session. If there's going to be any discussion about those individuals that, with regard to their performance, their salary, um, that has to be done in open session. The executive session can deal with other employees who did not request to have it discussed in open session. The executive session also can include the issue that I know has been discussed of the totality of the compensation, the compensation package itself, because that's for all employees. It's not really, you're not talking about individual employees when you talk about that. So that you can do in executive session too. But you cannot talk about those seven individuals in um, executive session. If you want to discuss them, I um, suggest that that be discussed now before you go into executive session. I don't know if each of you received the names of the individuals. Uh, you want to read them or you want me to? Yeah, I think I wrote them down, hopefully I wrote them down correctly. Alan Brower, Rick Roll, Rick Draft, Aaron um, Mandigo, Juan Correa, Jeffrey Smith, David Banks. The seven of them requested that uh, anything about them be discussed in uh, open session. Uh, and, and just, just to understand, you, you said uh, per job performance? Yes, and anything. What, what, I mean, their job performance, their salary, whether they just, the increase for their, for, um, that's proposed is um, appropriate. Um, yeah, under the way the Open Public Meetings Act works is if you're going to, if you, the council, are not discussing um, any terms of compensation that may affect an employee in executive session, we have to send what's called the rights notice to that individual. In this case, we sent it to all the employees of the borough because it would affect all of them. These individuals, and the employees then have the right to say, no, I don't want to discuss the executive <coughs> session. I want it right out there in the open as part of the public meeting, not executive session. And so these individuals have said they don't want to discuss an executive session. They want any performance evaluation of them, any discussion of their individual um, you know, compensation to be discussed in open session. How and that's their right to do. How many total employees do we have? Total, including part timers. So how many of those notices did go out? I believe it was twenty-eight. I believe twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. You were talking. So start talking. You know what? I probably to officially do it. I probably should be a motion to amend the agenda to discuss. Um, you know, these employees, these seven employees, um, so if just, there is any discussion. Just so everyone is aware, those the seven employees are all the DPW department, so we is specifically... Alan Brown? Uh, Alan, Alan. Alan Brown's water department, but the other role is DPW, yeah. 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 So they're on a separate resolution than the remainder which 21 is, employees. Which is why it was done that way. So after the executive session, there are now three choices that the council will have in terms of resolutions. You can pass a resolution that pulls out the DPW people, and I'm going to suggest also maybe Alan Brow if you want. Hey, you don't have to Alan Brow, just the DPW people, I'm sorry. Um, second resolution that would deal with the DPW employees. 
And then if you wanted to, we've just put the um, resolution that has everybody in it at the end. So you could just do them all in one, if that's what you choose to do. But we broke it down that way. You know, we thought that made the most sense in the scheme of things. Okay. So motion to um, amend the agenda to include a discussion about the seven individuals okay. If any. Okay. So a motion to amend the agenda to include the seven individuals who want this discussed in an open public session. Move. Second. Roll call. Graham? Yes. Hughes? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. Silvestri? Yes. Strange? Yes. And Fair? Yes. So who wants to open the discussion? I can open the discussion. Uh, I believe that there's at least one of the people that I was planning on looking at their salary and benefits. Um, Rich Drift, I think he's here tonight. Uh, just to start it off, and looking at his salary. Rich Drift, I believe, based on the salary guides or the salary information. Uh, his salary in 2021 was $65,966. And according to the resolution that you're taking a look at, um, it would give him an effective 10% raise. I believe it was shown in the document as a 2% raise and then a $5,000 adjustment. Is that correct, Bonnie? Yes. Now, in the last few months, in December of 2021, Council approved additional compensation for certain employees. Employees who have, I believe it's 25 years or more of experience or work, working with the borough and are pensionable. Rich is one of those employees that will become pensionable within a couple of years. <coughs> That resolution um, that was passed back in December, resolution 260-2021, also known as Chapter 48, provided Rick and all the borough employees who would meet Rich, the criteria. Rich, you uh, Rich, I'm sorry, Rich. All the borough employees that meet the criteria would get retiree health care benefits, which they never would have gotten before, before Chapter 48, the passing of Chapter 48. Chapter 48 is, a, in my view, is a very expensive benefit to provide to our employees um, that has never, was never conceived of, as far as I know, before. And the amount of money that the borough will be paying in compensation to those employees when they retire, if they retire before the age of 65, is approximately $30,000 a year per employee in health care benefits until they reach the age of 65. After they reach the age of 65, the number goes down because portions of that health care benefit are taken over by uh, Medicare, Medicaid, and the borough would pay a smaller portion of the health care benefit from that point until they, they and their spouse pass away. Um, this is a, it's a huge cost to the borough for these retiree health care benefits. Something that Rich didn't have for his first 22, 23 years of service to the borough. He didn't, didn't really expect it, as far as, as far as I'm concerned, as far as I know. If you, this is, this is a very expensive benefit. If you add up that $30,000 per year for the years between his projected retirement and his reaching age 65, 
and he can retire at the age of 57, I believe, it's in 2023, he'll get about $250,000 of healthcare benefits during that time frame until he reaches 65. And then beyond that time frame, it's another approximately, I believe it's close to $400,000 between the age of 65 and assuming he passes away at the age of 85. And that's, that's the information that was, I hope he doesn't pass away at the age of 85. But this is a brand new benefit that the borough adopted in December of 21, which I vehemently did not want to pass because it's a very expensive cost to the borough. It's a, it's a great boon for, for, for Rich. If I were him, I, I'd want it in a second. When I, when I retire, I get an additional, at a minimum, I believe it's $300,000 and a maximum of about five or $600,000 in healthcare benefits. Something I, I, I never expected before. If I were him, darn right I'd want it. But it's all part of employee compensation and coupling the huge overtime expenditure of health care for rich, compounding that with a 10% raise this year, I can't, I can't, I can't approve both ends of that compensation. I think to retain an employee, a valuable employee, you want to pay him what it's worth, what the competitive field is, is, is telling us. If other towns are paying that much, no problem. But as far as salary goes, but as far as the retiree health care benefit goes, in, in my view, that's a huge cost to the borough. Regardless of whether we can pay for it or not, it's, it's a huge additional piece of compensation for Rick. Huge. <coughs> In addition to the pretty sizable um, salary raise that we're contemplating, 10%. If we were to rescind Chapter 48, if we were going to exclude Rich from Chapter 48 or just rescind it in its entirety, I would have no problem okaying the 10% salary increase. But coupled together, I, I, I don't think it's right for the borough. It, it's great for Rich, absolutely. I don't think it's good for the taxpayers. I don't think it's a good precedent to set either. Do your concerns have anything at all to do with the job performance of Rich or any of the other people? No, I think I think and our I, DPW does a great job. I, mean, I, I, I think that's worth at least making note of. It's it's just I'm trying to look after the, the town's tax dollars too. I, I don't want to rubber stamp everything that comes comes across our desk, whatever the whatever is on our agenda. I try to look at this stuff. I try to look at the best interest of the town despite what Sally might think. Um, I'd, I'd be interested to hear what the other council people have to, have to say about the, the huge health care um, increase, that we're, retiree health care increase that we're contemplating, we've kind of given at this point to the long-term employees that they didn't expect before and it, I mean this is huge it's huge dollars and not not just cumulatively on a person by person basis and it's and it's real compensation you, they may not get in one lump sum it's thirty thousand dollars a year until they reach the six years 65 and then it's a reduced amount after that uh, it's probably going to be in the range of fifteen to twenty thousand dollars and then increasing from that point forward. And regardless of what people might say, it is a cost. It is a cost, and, and there's, these guys are, I mean, 
I, I understand the employees wanting the benefit. It's just a very, very expensive benefit for us to provide. I mean, I'll, I'll say that uh, anytime you have something you that you you, you town pays for, you, you got to you know you have a cost benefit. Having roads costs a lot of money. Teaching kids costs a lot of money. And but sometimes those benefits are worth it. And and it could very well be that this is worth it. I mean, I, um, I, I I'm not sure I can state that in you know that I know that it's that it's worth it, but I. It, I certainly am willing to un entertain the idea that this might be very much worth the cost. Um, I, I, I certainly don't disagree with the idea that that might have an impact as we move ahead on salary increases. Um, I mean, as people know, I, I'm a teacher. I don't expect to ever get a high, a giant salary. Uh, I see those two things as combined, so I'm willing to accept. Uh, you know, a salary that doesn't, I'm not going to have big bonuses or anything um, for the other benefits that go along with it. They're tied together, I see. So I can't, I can certainly see the idea that if benefits change in some manner, salaries might not, and vice versa. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, like I said, I, I think that a lot of the perceived increases in individual pay from 2021 to 2022 were the result of you know, the, the jobs being moved to a different line so that they were put together into one number instead of a few numbers. And I think that was a lot of the con confusion that, that I think people expressed. Um, yeah. It's complicated looking at all those lines and sometimes one job is now taken over by another person so those two numbers go onto one line so I think that is a lot of the confusion, uh, I, I personally think. Um, I, I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not always aware exactly of what, when you, I mean, I, I know that there's, um, you know, there are longevity things, there are other issues that come up with salary that are not a part of an increase. Um, so those are separate things, typically viewed separately. Um, if you, someone's been teaching for 25 years or doing something for 50 years, whatever, there are, you know, there are things where you get a, a, an extra thing for longevity that isn't included in typically when you calculate the percentage, even though it is a part of the, the change. Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Uh, and to add to that, I know all of us probably reached out to Bonnie throughout the last couple weeks since the last council meeting to get a better understanding and it, maybe it would be helpful maybe Bonnie if you could I know last time I had called in so I wasn't here at the table but um, and I know you went over and you did your whole presentation but maybe for the public if they could if you could explain the logic behind which I think Steve you explained it well but I think what's confusing to the public are those line items and how it works how how you arrive at those decisions of who gets what and how much maybe if you want I don't know if if it's necessary to repeat that, but I think it would be maybe helpful for people to understand. As far as the different like why, uh, positions they go yes. into. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so certain employees have different titles, and each of those titles comes with a different uh, salary appropriation. So in some cases, if there's four or five hats that one person wears, they're going to be added up and listed in one line item that one, for one person that's doing all those positions. So it's not like a typical job. Like I know I want to get my job and I get, that's my salary. So in government, it's a little bit different how it's figured out. So you would have a certification to do a specific job, uh, possibly a license for that, that um, would be required to have that position held by somebody with a license. So anybody who has that license would be eligible for that title. Is, is that line item just in general, I guess. I mean, not any specific, but, but let's say you have someone, I don't know, painting the swing sets each year, but they come in to do it from out, out of town, and that's all we pay them to do. Uh, and that's, that, that's an amount of money on the line to paint the swing sets. And then someone that is a component of the town already who receives other benefits and other things is not, we're not just paying them contracting to do that one job. 
uh, would the line item be assumed to be the exact same for that person or would what they get paid be different because they are a part of our organization already and are fitting it into their 40 hour or 50 hour or 60 hour work week that they are putting in. <coughs> I, I mean, or is it always exactly the same? I'm not sure I follow that. Um, well, I mean, if we pay a... Like a subcontract? Like if we pay a subcontract... You're talking an independent contractor coming in to paint the swings as opposed to an employee painting the swings. Mm -hmm. An employee is going to get benefits as required by state right. statute. The independent contractor would not get those benefits. Right, exactly. But the, the benefits... That we're saying that there's salary and wages, and there's the benefits. So the co independent contractor, we're simply paying a, a payment, whatever it happens to be. Whereas a an employee who's a component of the organization, would they simply receive the same exact payment? By, I mean, that, is that a, is that the assumption? The yeah, same no. payment? I will tell you that you know, typically it's done by employees when you can do it by employees. Because even with the benefits, it's cheaper than having the independent contractor come in for one job. And so right. it's not really apples to apples. Well, really oh. not. And typically, most businesses find you're better off doing it in-house with your employees rather than bringing in that independent contractor. It's cheaper. Well, exactly. Yeah. I say generally. In I mean, general. But yeah. but unless you say, we're going to have this, you know, we're going to switch from an independent contract to an in-house person, and we're going to pay them the exact same amount we would have paid the independent contractor. If you do that, then there is obviously it's not a benefit. If you're not a, you're not getting a deal because you're paying the exact same amount. You know, if you choose to do that. But I guess my question is, was would you assume that you would do that? Is that simply the way we have done it? I, what I'm we, hearing, if I may, is we have a lot of, we have a lot of employees. First of all, and a lot of them don't get any type of benefit. They work per hour, part time, okay, yeah. and whatever. And it's those employees that do, you know, these four hour jobs, maybe three times a week. They still get the same amount, but they're getting that two percent bump. And again, some of them got a little bit more than that just due to rounding. Oh, but yeah. if you look at the list, I think it was on the other resolution that we have, you'll see that those are nominal amounts, oh, uh, I, and and they don't qualify for ben any benefits at all. Right, and I I'm, and I'm, I'm not you know. I'm kind of think, asking a general question. If if we have an outside person doing a job and we pay them ten dollars, uh, whatever, ten dollars a year, and then we decide, I don't know, Natalie's going to do it, and do we then pay her the ten dollars a year? But then she's also still a part of the organization and receiving benefits, or did they would she receive eight dollars a year because she's also a part of our organization and, and is already receiving this other benefit? I, do you see what I'm saying? Like, is it always or is it always automatically the same amount to have that, to, you know, to cover that job? I know in business, yes, having your own in-house person, you, you'd save money on it, and that'd be the goal. Right, <laughs> but they would probably still get an increase each year. Oh, oh, cer certainly. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how, I'm not going to speak for volume, but the bottom line is that, you know, it's not always a dollar for dollar situation. You know, if the, you know, independent contractor would charge ten dollars, you don't, and you now have it done in house. You don't automatically raise the employee's salary ten dollars. That's not an automatic. That's, I don't think. Well, that's what I'm asking. Is that do, is I, I that how we do it or not? That's a general I, rule. I, that's, I'm it just depends. asking. Yeah. Okay. It depends. And I don't. I'm, I'm simply asking. Is that our policy, or or as you said, is that not our policy, or do we do we take it on a case by case basis, or I mean, I, you know, I, as we as we see things combined and moved along. Uh, you know, I think that's sometimes people see a combination and think it's a something different. Uh, I'm just curious how that's handled. That's all. Uh, is there a policy? Uh, that, maybe there's not a specific policy. I, I don't know. Steve, are you thinking of a specific employee? Or I, I mean, I mean, I'm just looking at a chart with a lot. There's a lot of, of numbers, and sometimes those numbers move from one place to another. Right. And I guess the, the question is, do they typically that amount simply go to be, and be added in the same exact amount to another, you know, another salary, or is it not always the same amount that gets added to the other salary? I, so I think. I mean, if, I, it, if we were talking about someone painting a place set, it's different. But if we're talking about, for for instance, our old administrator when he left. We looked at that role, we wanted to fill it, we filled it with a new administrator, but the salary was much less because it was just simply tacked on to some of the other roles that she was already doing. So if you remember, oh, we, yeah, okay. we yeah. 
kind of talked with what would be a reasonable salary and she accepted and we actually saved money with that. So that, I mean, I think, I understand what you're saying, but I think if we're talking with the example of Richie Drift, and I hope he stays for a long time, but if he was well, to retire, it's most likely we would find some, in fact, we did it with police. We were able to hire two police for the price well, of yeah, a bunch two of new guys. Yeah, exactly. So okay. it's, we have a small borough. You can look at all the employees and kind of make a, a good estimate of what would happen when they retire. Yeah. And once again, I'm, I'm just, people have asked questions and I'm just trying to understand the way that the decisions are made and, and just try to clarify. I'd like to go back to where Mr. Schwartz was going and, and to all the borough employees back there at DPW. I've, I've been the liaison for a few months, months now. I've met all of them. I've uh, driven out to some water main breaks just to see how they uh, operate and that these guys are spot on every day. So this is not a performance review conversation. It's really a conversation of your wage benefit compared to your compensation benefit. And the compensation benefit is really large with lifetime benefits. And my example, um, I'm in a private union, so you guys are not unionized, but I'm in a private union where we pay for our own benefits. Healthcare and our lifetime benefits are so out of control that our next contracts, we are not getting any raises to pay for these benefits moving forward. And that's, that's really the conversation I think Mr. Schwartz is trying to bring in, is that we have to, if we're gonna continue with Chapter 48 and lifetime benefits, then we have to measure a way of giving raises and compensating your, you guys and ladies in, in your pocket while we maintain being able to pay for these extra benefits down the road. And I think that's the balance we're trying to, to understand. Uh, this is clearly not a performance review on anyone here, because like I said, I think you guys and the girls all spot on in my short time here. So I, I just say. want you to understand that part of it. <clears throat> is that, that um, exactly as someone is getting ready to retire, and we know that, because right now we are not aware of anyone looking to retire. Sure. If they're looking to retire, and we know that those benefits are going to start kicking in, we have real numbers we can work with. And we can actually look for how we want to replace that person, and what it's going to cost for the benefits, and what that difference <clears throat> is going to be between the benefit and the new hire, and what we got back from that retiree's salary. So, so those are the numbers that all last fall, that guys were referencing to well we were right. estimating right you can't put a you can't put a true number without real facts so we were you know so, I, I mean at one point I, I thought we had uh, everyone on council was talking about some a company did a did number work and that's where a lot of this started with disagreement or the misunderstanding of moving forward with chapter 48 but those numbers and we have to put out a model that we can see and understand. I mean, you have to be pretty close if you know that someone's going to hire in three to five years and maybe you can kind of forecast what the market will be, right? Yeah, that's so, what that advisor put together for us. There was quite a disagreement here last fall about this moving all the way down the line and it still isn't resolved and now it's three more, four more months down the road and, you know, I guess this is the time we really need to wrap our hands around Well, I think what the, the um, you there. guys are looking for is something that's going to be a much longer process than the salary and wage increases. So if we, first of all, we have to agree of who this expert is because, well, we have our um, auditor here tonight, I believe. Yeah, so uh, maybe, maybe when we go into executive session, um, he can address this. But oh, if, mm -hmm. if we don't accept our CFO's numbers and we don't accept our financial advisor's numbers, whose numbers are we going to agree on that can give us a conversation, you know, an, an honest discussion? Michelle, the, the numbers that were provided to us from our supposedly finan uh, independent financial advisor, <clears throat> I'm, not, I'm not saying Bonnie, I'm talking about the Phoenix group. Our actual financial advisor. Yeah. Um, they don't say that that there's a cost savings or there's no cost to the benefit. <clears throat> they don't that they don't say that at all. Mm -hmm. They do not. There there is a real cost to providing the Chapter 48 benefits, and you may say there's a way to pay for it through taking the money from 
the golf course or someone else's salary but those costs are real cost and real increases in their compensation that can't be offset you can pay for them somehow you can tax people more you can take money from the golf course but it's not going to no decrease their amount of compensation the the, um, well, that, that's not well, and, in fact and, that wouldn't even work right but, but I mean and also when someone retires and you're able to hire you know breakage when you're able to hire someone at a lower cost obviously that costs less money now you're paying someone who gets paid less you know if someone potentially well, I mean, well, okay, you're exactly. If, if you're able to hire someone at a lower salary because they're in slightly, you know, less experienced and new, whatever, you know, obviously you've had some savings there by doing that, and maybe those savings are greater than the cost of providing the, um, you know, a, a benefit after retirement. Um, so you have a net savings that is, you know, a savings. Of course, it's not as much as it would have been if the person retired and you had a cheaper person and you didn't provide the savings, but. But maybe that encourages, of course, you know, retirement or other things to happen, which then makes it happen sooner. So, so I could see how it could be, a, you know, in some ways it might, as I said, things cost money, and a lot of times it's worth spending that money for a lot of different reasons, and even, if don't, even though it costs money, um, it is always worth looking to see, are all of the benefits worth the cost? And I think that's important to do. But anyway. Who else is on the list? Sorry, <laughs> Alan Brown, Rick Roll, um, Aaron Mandigo, Juan Correa, uh, Jeffrey Smith, and uh, David Banks. I mean, do we have any? <laughs> we can sit here, but it's just, if well, we don't have anything specific to say about those individuals, I mean, I don't have anything. I certainly don't have any performance evaluation. I mean, I don't, I don't well, have any all, job evaluations to say. I don't. I don't but it's know. also salary related to anything to do with salary or no? For those yeah, anything related to the salary of any, any of, of those, those people, will oh, yeah. have to be an open session. Yeah. What, what, how about identifying which of the lines are those people if we don't know which ones are which? I mean, is that would that be considered? With I mean, and I'm not trying to be funny, but I'm just saying, like, I, I wouldn't want to accidentally mention a line that is one of these people, and I didn't know that exactly which one's which on the list. I think that's, for the, that's a fair question. Yeah. I mean, it could could Bonnie tell us those line items in the executive session, or does it have to be done now? I, I don't know. I think it should be done now. Because, okay. I, I mean, know, I for, those, for those people, I think you should know. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I, I, didn't I didn't have that information. I, mean, I don't know yeah. exactly who each of these lines is. I don't. Line six is Aaron Mandingo. That's uh, laborer. Uh, yes. The laborer underneath that would be Juan Korea. And the supervisor is Rich. Rich, that's right. Yes. Are those the only full-time employees that have requested to be uh, talked about in open session? Page two, extra labor, CDL, 
but there will be full time employees that have asked and requested to be talked about in open session are um, Juan Perea, Richie Drift, and uh, I forgot. Aaron. Aaron. Right. And order operator is Alan Brown. But he's not a full time employee, correct? Is he a full time employee? No, he's a part time employee. He's the very last. Oh, it's the correct. Okay. Okay. I do have some questions, not criticisms, but just some questions about Rick Roll. It's, it's my understanding that his line items, and I didn't realize this before, are director DPW slash water, is that correct? CCO, is that correct? And fire marshal. What is CCO? Construction. Continuing occup occupancy when the change intends inspection. I, I didn't certification of continuing oh, okay. occupancy mm -hmm. like, like TCOs. Okay. He's the TCO inspector essentially, or, mm -hmm. or continuing uh, yeah. certificate certificate of occupancy inspector. Yeah. Yeah. I guess the only question. I, Further question with regards to the fire marshals. Who who did that function prior to uh, Rick being appointed the fire marshal? The state. The state? Mm -hmm. And now that it belongs to the borough or Rick's um, responsibility, how does how does the borough get paid for that? Does, does the borough get paid for it and then we reimburse Rick? Or how does it work the with regards to the fire marshal? People that are required to file inspections file them with the state as they did before. The state holds, collects the fees. When they did it on their own, obviously they withheld all the fees for themselves. If we have our own fire marshal, they return 65% of the fees to the borough. There are also additional fees that are now charged for life, a difference between life hazard and non-life hazard fees, which we didn't collect previously that we would now be able to collect. And then the fees that we do collect would offset what the salary is. But it's, it's kind of conjecture on how much, what fees you'll actually be bringing in on a yearly basis, right? right? Based on some prior experience, we had roughly eleven thousand dollars that come back to us. Right, but it is the same so inspections much occur year after year. So unless there's a change in the fees, so these, are, these are repeat inspections of businesses and things like that. Although I guess also when you sell a building, maybe it's things like that too. I guess, but but it's a cycle. Of the, right, and, and we. Okay meaning the borough pays for the insurance for for Rick as well. Is that correct? Or holds the insurance for him being the fire marshal? There's no additional insurance. No. Liability insurance is covered. Right. It's covered by the town mm -hmm. because he's a town employee. Mm -hmm. But there's no change for him to become the fire marshal to the insurance policy. Okay. Those are the only questions I had about Rick's salary and his compensation and how it worked with regards to the fire marshal. So it sounds like it's a value considering it's just the amount of 6466 that he gets. And you're saying we get 11. So it, it sounds like it's definitely worth having our own fire marshal. Oh, I, I think the fire marshal's up here on the other line, 8,000. That was eight? Which would be... Oh, fire set, what's this thing? That's sub code fire, uh, what do you call it? Uh, building inspector fire sub code. That's, oh, that's a different, different I think. Oh, okay. I think that's a subcontractor, is that correct, that we pay? That's right. Yeah. Okay. okay, so where is it? Well, still, it's still... Uh, it's like line five. Oh, okay. five. Oh, 
the cup? Where? Does, does Rick any does uh, Rick work any additional hours? I don't yeah. oh, he does. Yes, he does. Uh, okay. Well, still, it comes in under oh, 11, you know what, so it's still. This is in the. You know, this is in the. Um, supporting oh, okay. You're documents, looking at a different one. The supporting okay. documents. Sorry. Take a look at it. Please. Either way, it still sounds like right. it's worth it. So. The motion to move into executive session um, would be in order, assuming that the council still wants to go into executive session. Discuss other employees and the compensation package issue further. Okay. Uh, motion to move into executive session. Move. Second. Roll Graham? Yes. Hughes? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. Silvestri? Yes. Strange? Yes. And Fair? Yes. I just have a question about it. So since we broke these out, are we we can still talk about the uh, DPW resolution or so? Are we no, done talking we're, about we're done talking about the DPW okay. employees and their salaries and performance or anything mm -hmm. related to DPW per se. All, okay. just all of them are on that separate paper. Right. That's that correct. And that's one of the reasons why we right. did it that exactly. way. Okay. Makes sense. Try to give the, uh, the council options like that. It's easier than counting lines on the thing. Yeah. All right. Okay. Any and action may be taken. Action may be taken. Afterwards. Yeah, yeah after the executive session. How long do we think we're going to be in executive? There's no, you know, you, you can guess all you want. But, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can guess all you want. I mean, oh, considering that there are three resolutions listed after executive right. session, I think that there's a likelihood some action will be taken. I can't tell you what. 